Well, hello again for another scriptural study. Is the pagan day January 1st truly the first day of the new year? Will this new year truly be 2016? This is the latest scriptural study topic we are about to share quickly in a high-level manner. As always, please have your video screen on full screen to obtain the best view to read the scriptural passages being shared. And feel free to stop the video at your convenience to take the time to read the scriptural passages in full along with the associated information. Well, here goes the world again, frantically moving at full speed ahead, being led astray in full force from actual forces that they are entirely unaware of and or just do not care about. Some would say the world and those still in it have lost all sense of direction, and they have been duped to believe the pagan day January 1st is actually the new year when in fact nothing is more farther from the truth than this gigantic lie. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, many believe, as do we, just how this scriptural verse references how the world and those in it have been led astray by the installation and utilization of false calendar systems. These non-scriptural calendar systems with their associated man-made traditions are not of and are from our Almighty Father in Heaven. If having a love of the truth is no longer of interest to you, and or never has been, then this may not be a video you may be interested in. Remember, having a love of the truth does not mean any one individual has the whole truth and nothing but the truth, but rather, anyone that who does have a love of the truth will seek it and share it. So if you do not have a love of the truth, please consider this before you turn this video off. Please read the scriptural verse of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 9 through 10, to understand in full why you may presently not have a love of the truth. The truths that we are continuing to learn about in this scriptural study reveals in full light the lies that this world promotes day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. And the lies that this world promotes in opposition to the way of Yahuwah will reveal in the light of day beyond doubt other reasons just why there is so much pain and confusion in this world. Because isn't it true that the truth may hurt for a little while once acknowledged, but a lie hurts forever? And the lie we are about to reveal to you, if you are already not aware of it, has hurt many for over thousands of years. So then, what is this lie that the world promotes so vehemently and why? First read scriptural passages from 1 Yahukanan, or the book of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, before proceeding to the next slide, if still interested. So, what if someone told you that the pagan day, January 1st, is not New Year's Day, and that it's not really 2016? How would you feel about that? Yes, some of you who are not presently aware of this undeniable fact may be very surprised. I know I was. And then there may be some of you that will state that this non-scriptural subject matter on false pagan calendars is irrelevant to you. And yes, some will state that they do not even care if someone and or something has led them astray to believe in a lie because they will share it has nothing to do with them. But isn't it true that truth itself does indeed matter and that each of us truly cares and relies on truth to get through our day? Anyone that is still conscious would have a very difficult time explaining that truth does not matter. More importantly, the questions on what is truth and who does it come from will now be the focus of this scriptural study as it relates to why the pagan day of January 1st is not truly New Year's Day and why it is not really 2016. Please read the scriptural verses that are contained in this visual before proceeding because this is why this book that contains these verses remains to be year after year the all-time best seller. New Year's Eve is a major social holy day event for many people that are still of and in this world. 
many people hold parties at home, or attend special celebrations to celebrate the world's upcoming New Year. In many cities, large-scale public events are held. People all over the world become friends of the world, so to speak, during this time of year, without ever questioning its origins. At face value, this New Year's tradition may seem okay, but what does the word of truth share about these man-made traditions? In the book of Jacob, or James, chapter 4, verse 4, it states the following, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with the Almighty One? Whoever therefore intends to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of the Almighty One. So why is this the case? Well, we can easily find the answers by exploring and researching just where the traditions of New Year's originated. The celebration of New Year's began in ancient Babylonia in Mesopotamia. It was a pagan custom of ancient sun worship 2,000 years before the birth of the Messiah. Are we not told to come out of Babylon? And is this not why, in the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 7 through 9, which state the following, And in vain do they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men. Forsaking the command of the Almighty One, you hold fast the tradition of men. And he said to them, Well do you set aside the command of the Almighty One in order to guard your tradition. New Year's is one of the oldest and most universal of all pagan traditions. The custom of celebrating it has remained essentially unchanged for 4,000 years. There is scarcely a people, ancient or modern, savage or civilized, writes Theodore H. Gaster in his definitive book, New Year, which has not observed it in one form or another. Yet no other festival has been celebrated on so many different dates or in so many seemingly different ways. In ancient Babylon, New Year's festivals were closely bound to the pagan feast we now call Christmas today. You will notice the proof that anyone can find so easily in so many places with historical documentation and archaeological backup. Mesopotamia, writes Earl W. Count, is the very ancient mother of civilization. Christmas began there over 4,000 years ago as the festival which renewed the world for another year. The 12 days of Christmas, the bright fires, and probably the Yule Log, the giving of presents, the carnivals with their floats, their merry makings and clownings, the mummers who sing and play from house to house, the feastings, the church processions with their lights and song. All these and more began there centuries before the Messiah was born and they celebrated the arrival of the new year. You can read this in the book entitled 4,000 Years of Christmas, pages 20 to 21. This is how it all began. The celebration of New Year's began in ancient Babylonia in Mesopotamia. It was a pagan custom of ancient sun worship 2,000 years before the birth of the Messiah. And this is why... During the pagan month and day of December 25th, well before the Messiah was born, the Babylonian son of the king Nimrod and his queen, Semiramis, was deified during the same day. This boy of Babylon is known scripturally and in history, proven through archaeology as the child Tammuz, and his birthday was celebrated on the pagan month and pagan day of December 25th. Notice as well the rest of the pantheon of deities that were born on this very same day. When I learned that Jesus was not the name of the Messiah and that the Messiah was not born on December 25th, so many scriptural verses started to make sense over and above the lies that I originally received about them. As an example, in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 15, which states the following, And the Almighty One said further to Moshe, Thus you are to say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, the Almighty One of your fathers, the Almighty One of Abraham, the Almighty One of Yitzhak, and the Almighty One of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my remembrance to all generations. 
And then it clicked on all of the other verses. Here's just one. In the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it states, There is no other name under the heavens in which we can be saved and are delivered. For centuries and up to this very day, not one culture and a race gets it right in regards to when the Messiah was born. All through history, the pagan day, December 25th, is dedicated to ancient pagan sun gods and are the ever-existing world's sun worship system, with each culture and a race in their own world religions inventing their own god. But it's not the Messiah that they have ever celebrated on this day because the term Messiah literally means the anointed one of Yah. Even Christianity has duped itself into believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and as such they have aligned themselves willingly to history's axis of evil pagan deities that are not scriptural. Think everyone, the term Christ literally means anointed, but anointed by whom? It doesn't say by whom this Jesus is anointed by, and there is a reason for this. The term Messiah literally means the anointed one of Yah. There is a big difference, folks, on the terms Christ and or Messiah. Christ is of and from the world, and the Messiah is of and from our Almighty Father in heaven, whose name is Yahuwah. And this is why we scripturally state, Hallelujah, which means praise Yah. But yes, Christianity will continue in the pagan December 25th sun worship system of world religions, which we see all through time saying Jesus Christ was born on this jade, just like the other world religious deities claimed. And not surprisingly, Christians will continue to utilize the book of Yeshayahu or Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 as their anchor verse during Saturnalia, much to their shame. The Messiah is not a baby to be worshipped as a baby in swaddling clothes once a year. He is King of Kings and Master of Masters. And as such, this ongoing and historical December 25th farce robs the Son of Man of his sovereignty because the government and rule will one day be on his shoulders just as the book of Yeshiahu or Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 states. Having a love of the truth only means that you're going to ask questions. You're going to question the present status quo. And by doing so, you will learn further what the truth is and the origins of the traditions of men, which are not supported by scripture. It doesn't make you better than anybody else. All it does is, it makes and has you further seek truth because you have a love of the truth. No more no less. What we do with these truths is a much bigger question, especially when it comes to the calendar. Remember, the world's religious Christ and the other deities may have very well been born on the 25th of the pagan month of December, but the Messiah was not. None of the other world religious deities, including Jesus Christ, was in the beginning with the Almighty Father in Heaven, which the Word clearly reveals. Scripture reveals that the Messiah came in His Father's name, and the other world religious deities did not. And this is why in the book of Yehuchanan, or John chapter 5, verse 43, stated the following, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. So as you can see, we're getting much closer with whom has brought in the beginning of the year all through time in this world with its man-made calendars, including the pagan January 1st New Year's traditions. Because the Messiah Yahushua is on his father's calendar timepiece that hangs in the heavens and not on a wall like worldly man-made calendars do. Let's dig a little deeper because what has been shared already is common knowledge. The world and its world religions ensure annually that these easily proven scriptural facts are either usurped and or are completely hidden year after year. And there are reasons for this. It will become even clearer as we further share the scriptural subject matter on the whys this world religious abomination exists to this very day. 
as the new mixed pagan worship system then and now known as Christianity spread, pagan holy days were either incorporated into this Catholic church calendar and are abandoned altogether. Remember, the world has holy days, or holidays, while the scripture has set apart days. More on this later, but for now, let's continue. By the early medieval period, most of the Christian Europe geographical area regarded Annunciation Day, or March 25th, as the beginning of the year. According to Catholic tradition, Annunciation Day commemorates the angel Gabriel's announcement to Miriam, or Mary, that she would be impregnated by the Almighty One and conceive a son to be called Emmanuel, which literally means the Almighty One with us. The name Jesus Christ was a later invention. After William the Conqueror, a.k.a. William the Bastard and or William of Normandy, became King of England on December 25th, 1066, he decreed that the English return to the date established by the Roman pagans for New Year's Day on the pagan day, January 1st. This calendar move ensured that the commemoration of the pagan deity Jesus and his birthday, December 25th, would align with William's coronation and the commemoration of Jesus' circumcision, January 1st, and would start the new year, thus rooting the English in Christian calendars and his own coronation. William's strategic innovation was eventually rejected, and England rejoined the rest of the Christian world and returned to celebrating New Year's Day on another pagan day again, March 25th. About 500 years later, in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII, a.k.a. Hugo Boncampini, from 1502 to 1585, abandoned the traditional Julian calendar. By the Julian reckoning, the solar year comprised of 365.25 days and the intercalation of a leap day every four years was intended to maintain correspondence between the calendar and the seasons. However, there was a slight inaccuracy in the Julian measurement. The solar year is actually 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds, or 365.2422 days. This slight inaccuracy caused the Julian calendar to slip behind the seasons about one day per century. Although this regression had uh, amounted to 14 days by Pope Gregory's time, He based his reform on restoration of the vernal equinox, then falling on the pagan day March 11th. To the date had, 1,257 years earlier, when the Council of Nicaea was convened on March 21st, 325 Common Era. Pope Gregory made the correction by advancing the calendar 10 days. The change was made the day after October 4th, 1582, and that following day was established as October 15th, 1582. The Gregorian calendar differs from the Julian in three ways. Number one, no century year is a leap year unless it is exactly divisible by 400. Example, 1600, 2000, etc. Number two, years divisible by 4000 are common, not leap years. And number three, once again, the new year would begin with the date set by the early pagans for the first day of the month, Janus, or January 1st. What a mess. On the pagan day of January 1st, the world's New Year's Day in 1577, with Pope Gregory XIII decreed that all Roman Jews, under the pain of death, must listen attentively to the compulsory Catholic conversion sermon given in Roman synagogues after Friday night services. On New Year's Day 1578, Gregory signed into law a tax forcing Jews to pay for the support of a house of conversion to convert Jews to Christianity. On New Year's 1581, Gregory ordered his troops to confiscate all sacred literature from the Roman Jewish community. Thousands of Jews were murdered in the campaign. As we can see to this very day, it has been more than just Jews that have been forced fed this falsified de facto calendar because all and any who are born today have no choice in the matter if they scripturally do not know better as we get a glimpse of just how corrupt this world religious organization is in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. More on this in a minute. Throughout the medieval and post-medieval periods, the pagan day January 1st, supposedly the day on which the pagan deity Jesus 
circumcision initiated the reign of Christianity, and the death of Judaism was reserved for anti-Jewish activities, synagogue and book burnings, public tortures, and simple murder. Now let's go back further in time to understand how Rome and the Catholic Church put one over on us all, so to speak. And here's the rub. Many people will state that they're not Catholic. But if you're on this calendar, you are Catholic because you are celebrating the traditions of men made on this calendar that hangs on a wall and not the calendar that hangs in the heavens. More on this as we move forward. The first time the New Year was celebrated on the Roman pagan day, January 1st, was in Rome in 153 BCE. In fact, the month of January did not even exist till around 700 BCE when the second king of Rome, Numa Pompilius, added the pagan months of January and February. So, as we've seen, New Year's Day is observed on the pagan day, January 1st, the first day of the year on the modern Gregorian calendar, as well as the Julian calendar used in the Roman Empire since 46 BCE. Think about it. The Romans originally dedicated New Year's Day to Janus, the god of gates, doors, and beginnings for whom the first month of the world's year is named. But as we all know, scripturally, this is not the first month, as we find in the word, which is a beeb. The word and the world are on two different calendar and timing systems, as we have shared on so many times on previous videos. This can be easily proven historically, archaeologically, scientifically, and of course, knowing emphatically well in advance, as recorded in scripture, what was to come from the world and those in it to hide the true timing piece that hangs in the heavens. With ever more diligent study, we verify and confirm that indeed in 46 BCE, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established the pagan day January 1st as New Year's Day. Caesar felt that the month named after this god January would be the appropriate door to the year. Caesar celebrated the first January 1st New Year by ordering the violent rooting of revolutionary Jewish forces in the Galilee. Eyewitnesses say blood flowed in the streets. In later years, Roman pagans observed the new year by engaging in drunken orgies, a ritual they believed constituted a personal reenacting of the chaotic world that existed before the cosmos was ordered by the world's so-called gods. Looks like the party continues to this very day with the traditions of men on this calendar that hangs on a wall. When you think about it, we are not so modern after all, even with our high-tech gadgetry. The world's calendar is still calibrated to the timing piece of old and ancient Babylonian and Roman deities with its festivities of debauchery. This is one of the reasons why people who consciously calibrate themselves willingly to this timing piece that hangs on a wall are called guardians of the Gregorian. What a shame! But when the world and those who crave to remain in it do not have a love of the truth, this is indeed what we end up with as we read again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. The celebration of New Year's is never once commanded in the scriptures. The Messiah Yahushua and the apostles never observed it. Moshe, Moses, forbade it. Some will state, it doesn't matter. But it does matter to Yahuwah whether we adopt the customs of the heathen, as we read in the book of Yirmiyahu, chapter 10, verse 2. Many state that this scriptural verse does not refer to this subject matter at all. What about this one, then? In the scriptures, Yahuwah hates and condemns the traditions of men. In the book of Debarim, or Deuteronomy, we read that the pagan rites are known as an abomination to him. Theodore H. Gaster writes concerning the familiar New Year's babe, quote, Actually, the New Year babe is far older than he looks. In ancient Greece, it was customary at the great festival of Dionysus to parade a babe cradled in a winnowing basket. This was taken to symbolize the annual or periodic rebirth of that god as the spirit of fertility. So who was this Dionysus? None other than Bacchus, the god of wine. In his honor, the Greeks held a festival called the Festival of the Winepress. 
at the time which corresponds to our months of January, February. Today, more alcoholic beverages are consumed during the world's holy day season than at any other time of the year. New Year's Eve is noted for its licentiousness, wild and wanton parting. People are deceived by the world's riotous pagan holy day spirits, for the most part emanating from liquor bottles, all the while calling it and practicing it under the Christian world religious banner, let alone many others. Another symbol of New Year celebrations is equally pagan. It is the familiar figure of a white-haired man carrying a skiff. What does he represent? Well, the ancient Greek god Kronos. It is from the name Kronos we derive our chronograph, which measures time. Among the Greek gods, Kronos originally cut a swath of human sacrifice with his sharpened skith. The silent reaper anciently reaped little children in horrible episodes of mythical cannibalism. This Greek rite of human sacrifice was adopted by ancient Rome, where human sacrifice was practiced at least until 300 CE. No wonder Yehua, the Almighty One, warns the pagan world's New Year's celebrations as an abomination to him, as we've already read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12, verse 31. Strange as it seems, the professing world religious world, including the Christianity world, religion, praises and practices customs and days of pagan origin, thinly cloaking them in Christian, Hellenized sounding names. I as well used to accept these vain traditions of men until I was scripturally informed. You too may have accepted these vain traditions of men, never realizing they are pagan to the very core. Many people will openly admit the truth when asked about the pagan origin of these days, but they will stubbornly refuse to stop observing them. And this is why the word in the renewed covenant of the scriptures states the following in the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 7 through 9, which we've already shared. So when does Yahuwah begin his new year with his timepiece that hangs in the heavens? Remember, it is the Almighty One, Yahuwah Himself, who created the universe. He set the heavenly bodies in their courses at creation. It is by His master clock that time is determined. And as such, only the Almighty One of the universe has the authority to set the date of the beginning of the real new year. And hallelujah! The calendar that hangs in the heavens announces spring as being the new year time period when everything is being rebuilt, restored, and renewed. It is not in the middle of a dead winter as the man-made worldly calendars on a wall state. Notice in the book of Shemoth or Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 when the Eternal spoke to Moshe or Moses, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. The first month of Yahuwah's set-apart calendar, which is set apart from the world, is called in the scriptures Abib. It means the month of green ears. It is no coincidence that astronomically the sun is aligned with a set of stars representing the lamb this time of year in the spring and that the full moon in the spring is aligned with a set of stars called Bethula or Virgo, representing the Abrahamic covenant which shares the gift of promise to his chosen, which is built into his appointed times, and are feast days that are set apart from the world and its ways. This happens only one time of year astronomically in which the sun, moon, with the stars are in perfect alignment, along with the scriptural month of Abib, in perfect rhythm and harmony. The scriptural harvest time periods are in alignment with the agricultural harvest time periods. And why wouldn't they be? This heavenly calendar is not in the control of mankind. Because mankind is not capable of creating, managing, and or even sustaining this type of precision and or accuracy. Only the Father of Lights from above can create and sustain this type of gift. This timing piece never changes. The Father never changes. Mankind in the world constantly has to adjust and realign its calendars that hang on a wall, as we have seen proven in history and archaeology. 
Again, the purpose of these presentations are to get more folks outside to test and prove all things for themselves, with the intent to free themselves from enslavement of being prisoners of this world and its world religious timepiece that hangs on a wall. This timepiece that hangs in the heavens, or Shemaim, is not tied to a world religious system, which as we all know firsthand, is that the world's calendar system that hangs on a wall is tied to the world's financial and consumerism system created by man. Ouch! If this does not wake you up, nothing will. Yahuwah and his timepiece that hangs in the heavens is inspiring and speaks of good news for those who know what true favor is indeed all about. Thankfully, there is a heavenly calendar system that is set apart from the world that can free us from drunkenness and stupor, let alone the world's calendar system that is so tied to its financial system of consumerism, designed to make humankind prisoners of debt and as well increase pain and emptiness. This is why we state hallelujah, because the timepiece that hangs in the heavens reveals the true New Year's starting point, which proclaims the esteem of the Almighty One and declares the expanse and the work of His hand. Because with this timepiece that hangs in the heavens, day-to-day pours forth speech and night-to-night reveals knowledge. What knowledge, you might ask? With Yahuwah and His calendar that hangs in the heavens, It reveals the appointed times, or as Moedim, which the Messiah Yehushua is fulfilling. And as we know from the word itself, it is only through the Son of Man, the Messiah himself, and his work that he is carrying out on behalf of his Father's plan of redemption for all of humankind that we will have access to the Father and the promise of eternity. We could read this further in the book of John or Yehukan in chapter 14, verse 6. Yehushua said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father too. From now on you know him and have seen. The Messiah is set apart from this world. Our Father in heaven is set apart from this world. His name Yehua is set apart from the world and his calendar of appointed times is set apart as well. Unfortunately, the set apart appointed times of Yahuwah and his way will not be known once again with the people in Times Square this year. As horrifying as this is, New York City, let alone everywhere else, will be celebrating something else entirely, let alone worshiping something else entirely for that matter. The world on whole is not yet aware of the Ruach HaKodesh or set-apart spirit, and as such, why it cannot yet have the good news of peace, because it continues to worship the pagan day December 25th and its pantheon of deities and gods of man all through time, let alone right up to this very day that are fully linked to the world's New Year's traditions. The world does not yet worship the Messiah, the only one who is anointed of Yah, to carry out the calendar good news message that hangs in the heavens, and not the calendar of man that hangs on a wall. We read further in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. And having come, he brought as good news peace to you who were far off, and peace to those near, because through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. It's not a coincidence that mankind yet knows how to create and sustain peace for long periods of time. Because the world remains enthralled and locked and loaded in being guardians of the Gregorian under the present spirit of the air. None of us were given a choice at birth to follow Yahuwah and his calendar that hangs in the heavens. But as per the word, we can make that choice now as we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Quote, and you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, of the spirit of the air that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once lived in the lusts of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, as also the rest. So this year... Don't worry about New Year's resolutions. Just stop being a 
guardian of the Gregorian, which is laced in astrology, which has everyone only acknowledging self and the work of their own hands. Do a complete 180 and acknowledge Yahuwah and the work of his hands that celebrates New Year's in the spring, let alone dropping all of the pantheon of December 25th deities man creates with his world religions. Remember, our Father in Heaven thinks and acts differently than what the world does, as we read in the book of Yeshayahu, or Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8. And isn't it wonderful that this scriptural subject matter about the heavenly calendar is all about family? This scriptural subject matter is indeed controversial in this world, but not in the heavens or Shemaim. Yes, this is a big challenge for us all to overcome, but the rewards are far more value added than anything the world can provide, as we read in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. Oh, one last thing quickly. Are you one of those folks that actually believes it's going to be 2016? Have you ever questioned this as well? Well, the answer is extremely easy to find. And once again, just look who put their hands into this as well. As you can see, every effort of the Guardian of the Gregorian is extremely calculating in the sense that they do not want you to be aware of scriptural truth, let alone the timing piece of Yahuwah that hangs in the heavens. Why? The calendar of Yahuwah and his appointed times represents a 7,000 year framework of time, integral to the design of the universe. The Messiah Yahushua has determined to perfect the universe under his Father's plan within 7,000 years. The universe contains seven 1,000 year periods called millennia. A millennium contains 20 jubilee cycles where each cycle lasts 50 years. Yahuwah told Noah in Bereshith or Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 that after a 120 jubilee years or 6,000 years, he would no longer strive with mortal man. At the end of the sixth millennium, Yahushua the Messiah will grant the gift of eternal life the age of life to all who believe and obey him. And here is the sad, sad reality of things to date. Because of the effectiveness of the guardians of the Gregorian that have effectively hidden and suppressed scriptural truth, you will find timelines that place us in the year 5777 to 5998. So if you and your set-apart assembly wants to engage in testing and proving all things with this scriptural subject matter, please feel free to help us as fellow truth seekers to learn further and together as one. And this is why we do not profess that we are teachers on this YouTube channel. And also why we do not charge and or accept donations for these videos and or articles that we share. The truth is we are only children of the word. And as Bereans, we study the word daily to learn further to worship in the way, truth, and life. We all but have one teacher, and that is the Messiah, Yahushua, because he alone is an expert on the word, as he is the word. And because he is the only one teacher that has experienced in full the success in carrying out the appointed times of his father. And he will do so in the very near future to complete the rest. Have you ever wondered... On the history of the New Year's Eve ball, revelers began celebrating New Year's Eve in Times Square as early as 1904, but it was in 1907 that the New Year's Eve ball made its maiden descent from the flagpole atop one Times Square. So this year, now you know what the scriptures, the very word shares about the true New Year's celebration that happens in the spring according to the calendar of Yahuwah that hangs in the heavens that no man can manipulate. And you now know some history of how the world has created a guardian of the Gregorian system to ensure the masses are not aware of the truth of the time and year we are actually in. So as we close this video out, Take a look at this footage. Each and every one of these people in Times Square, let alone, let alone all over the world, are not aware of the calendar that hangs in the heavens. And now you have learnt and are aware of some of the reasons why from a scriptural standpoint. So as we can see, truth indeed does matter. The world is passing away. It's not getting better each and every day. 
and for various reasons as we've shared in this scriptural study here and now. We hope these scriptural studies have provided value for you and your loved ones. We consider it a privilege to share in the name which is above all names. Feel free to critique these scriptural studies in a scriptural manner, of course. And again, thank you for the blessing in sharing in the name which is above all names. All the best.